Okay, hi everyone. Uh, this is our regular Thursday night catch up. Uh, I'm just going to turn the volume on this one down so I can't hear an echo. Okay, so tonight we're going to go through how to manage your contacts. Um, now, just bear with me here while I share my screen with you all. Um, this one. So this is our contact manager that we've developed. Um, it's nice and simple and it's easy for everyone to use. Um, and it's, I guess, an alternative to using programs like Lead Train, um, CRM and other commercially available products. Um, probably does the same thing a little bit simply. Um, might not do some really funky stuff, but um, it still works nonetheless. And um, it, when you're starting out, it's probably a really simple and easy way to manage your contacts. So just looking at the screen here, it's just uh, based in Excel. So you can use it on a PC or on a Mac, doesn't matter. Um, always better if you use it on a computer though, rather than on your phone, because you've got um, a much larger screen to view it on. <clears throat> So if you have a look at the top here, um, this is just a sample one that um, I've set up for everyone. So up the top here, you've got a field that you can customise it so you can put your name in. Um, obviously you don't have to, but uh, just sort of um, sets it up as, as your, own, um, your own file. Um, down the first left-hand column, um, is just a series of numbers. So it just starts at one and goes to 20. Um, once you fill up to 20, just keep punching in 21, 22, and so on and so on. Um, not super critical, but um, it might just help you in the future manage your contacts as far as uh, once you enter someone, you might think, oh, yeah, they're about contact number 50, uh, and you might be able to search by that number there and find out who contact number 50 was. Um, second column is pretty simple. It's just the person's name. Hang on, I'm just getting my earphones put in. Um, so, yeah, second column is just the person's name. So in, in um, there you can see I've put a couple of samples in. Peter number one, Paul number two, Mary number three and John number four. In their addresses, once again, uh, both of these fields you can type in whatever you want. They're not restricted to anything. So you can put in as long an address or as short an address as you want. Uh, if someone's got a really long address and you need to see it all, you can just expand that column out like that. Um, or you can bring it in a little bit shorter as well. So you can click on there and just bring it in a little bit. Um, as far as email goes, sorry, I'll just close the door here. Sorry about that. As far as email goes, obviously open to any anything you can type in there as long as it's an email address and then Excel will recognise it as an email address and you'll be able to click on that later on and um, basically grab that and it'll go straight to an email. I won't save that. And I will go back to the screen that I was sharing, which is here somewhere. Uh, let me find it again. Here we go. Um, the fourth column is the phone number. So that, once again, is open to any text that you want to type in. So you can put in area code um, and obviously the eight-digit phone number beyond that. Uh, and the fifth column, now I can customise these columns. So anyone on our team, I can customise these columns to whatever you want. Um, so this column here I've, I've selected as added to MailChimp um, and these column, this column has got a pick box. So when you click on that cell, you can just see a little drop down box and the drop down box lets you select yes or no. Um, the beauty of that is that it makes sorting that column much easier later on. So uh, if anyone wanted any extra columns added to this spreadsheet or any extra information that they can sort on, um, certainly let me know or you can add it yourself, whatever. 
Um, but I've sent this out to all our business builders and if anyone else wants a copy of it, they're more than welcome to, to grab it. Um, just give us support, give, give us a bell or um, send us an email. Okay, so the next column is contact history. So this column is open to any text that you want to type in as well. So you can type in anything you like. Um, rang today, rang them yesterday, or I rang them last week, or I must ring them on a certain date. Um, just make it really specific and um, uh, I guess easy to understand because once your contacts build up and you've got 100, 200, 300 contacts in there, um, your contact history is something that you'll need to, you, you might want to search by later on and it needs to be fairly clear on what your past history with that person is and um, when you need to contact them next. Um, next contact date. So this column here I've put in there so that you can sort it and I'll show everyone how to sort later on. Um, <clears throat> but basically, if you put in, it's all these cells in this column are set to date format. So you can go in there and type in um, the 2nd of the 11th, 2017. And Excel will set it up as a date so that you can sort by that date, date later on. Uh, so it's quite important that... that um, that column is set as uh, a date format. The next one is um, enrolled. So this, this column is very, very handy so that you can go through and sort your people and work out who's enrolled and who hasn't. So I'll just give you an example here. I haven't filled these in deliberately. So if we go in there and say, no, that person hasn't enrolled. Um, yes, or no, that person hasn't. Let's say, yes, this person has. So that's how easy it is. It's just clicking on the cell. The little drop down pops up. You click on the drop down and you get to choose yes or no. If you go into that column and try to type in uh, maybe, it will come up with an error and say the, the value of enters is not valid. Try again. So then you go to your little drop down and select yes or no. <clears throat> Once again, we've got another column that's controlled uh, by a drop-down box. So this one basically says, have you sent them a welcome pack or not? So this person's not enrolled, so you would assume that no, you haven't sent them a welcome pack. So you can type in N or you can select, oops. See how I, type, I tried to type in yes or no there and yes or no wasn't the right answer. So welcome pack is either sent or in this case, because the person's on enrolled, it's still to send, or you might leave it blank. So if they haven't enrolled, I would, oops, somehow we've added that on there. Let's go back to full screen there. So if they haven't enrolled, I would leave that blank. So let's just go clear contents. Um, this person has enrolled, but let's assume that they have not been sent a welcome pack, so let's hit still to send. This person hasn't enrolled, so they won't have one. This person hasn't enrolled. This person has, but let's type in that there has been sent. <clears throat> um, as you can see, if you go in here and try to type maybe, then it won't let you. It says no, that's not a valid answer. And we'll get into why that's um, been set up like that later on. Um, once again, welcome call is a controlled um, cell column. So that person hasn't enrolled. So let's just say, um, leave that one blank. If they have enrolled, let's just say that their welcome call has been done. Um, these two people haven't enrolled. This person has enrolled. So let's just say it's outstanding. Um, once again, we've got a column in here that just suggested we put in there called oil camp. So we can just say, yes, they've done oil camp. Yes, this person has. No, this person hasn't. No, this person hasn't. And yes, this person has. Um, and that's basically the last of the, the columns in there. Actually, I've just noted that this last person hasn't been put in. So let's just pretend we've got a new enrollment. Oh, we've got a new contact. Someone just rung up on the phone. Um, you've got all their details. So you can type this in while you're on the phone to them or you can scribble it down on a piece of paper, whatever you like. 
but let's just say this is um, Joan 5. She lives at 5 5 Street. Her email address is 5 at just no spaces. 5 at uh, 5.nets.au. Her phone number is 07555678900. And let's just say that she hasn't been added to MailChimp just yet because you haven't gotten around to them. And they've said, can you please ring me next week? So ring. Don't type next week because next week never comes. So let's say ring on the 24th of the 11th, 2017. It's pretty, pretty specific. Um, you could also type in there, you could say at 10 a.m. Whatever you've agreed with that person. Um, I've filled in all those other columns there, right through to Oil Camp. Now if we scroll across a little bit more, We've got a notes column. Uh, let me just go across here. So in the notes column, you can type in whatever you want in there. Um, so you might say, has three young kids. Um, this person here, you might say, suffers from headaches. Um, this person here, we might say, has um, sleeping sleeping difficulty. Anything that's going to give you a personal contact with this person next time you ring them back. So as soon as you pick up the phone, you can start talking to them and say, "Oh, how are you going with your sleeping?" or "How are your headache, headaches going?" Um, anything like that. Uh, this one here, let's say. Um, um, loves, loves lavender. Uh, and this last person, uh, what can we put in for them? Let's say um, has a thick sister. Cool. And that's basically all you need. If you need, once I said, as I said before, if you need any more details in there. Um, you can add extra columns if you wanted to. If you don't know how to do that, let us know. I can customise this for um, any other boxes that you want to put in there, or any other columns that you want to put in there, sorry, um, that you might want to search on. But these are probably just the basic things that you might, might want to search through your contacts on. Um, if you look down the bottom here, we're typing in all this information into the Your Contacts column. Um, uh, your Contacts tab, sorry. This is the pick boxes tab, so don't want to really go in here and delete anything or play around with anything unless you know really know what you're doing. Um, that's just the information that I've put in there for the pick boxes that are in the main column. So you don't really need to know how that works. Um, if you're not a wizard Excel, that's fine. Just don't worry about it. You don't need to go into there at all. All you need to do is just type everything into your contacts. So if we go back here again, so say you've got your contacts in there, you might have five contacts in there, say you've got 50 contacts, it doesn't matter. What you can do now is you can go into Excel and you can search for someone. So say you've woken up on Monday morning and thought, right, what am I gonna do this week? Um, I've got not, not much on, let's go through my contacts and work out who I need to contact this week. So if, you know, obviously if you've got 50 or 100 people in there, you're gonna look at it and go, wow, there's all these people in there, who do I contact? I don't want to have to look through the contact date column and try and sort out um, who's the next person I need to contact. So what you can do is you, I've set up a heap of filters along the top here. So you can filter by any one of these columns right through here. You can filter by alphabetical. Um, but in this case, what we want to do is filter by the next contact date. So what we would do is go into here and go click ascending contact date. Close it down. So what it comes up with is it, it sorts all these people in ascending contact date. So this person here, I said I was going to ring them on the 5th of the 10th. Um, 
let's just say it's not the fifth to the tenth, but it's the next available time that you've got available to contact that person. So that's the first person you've got to ring. This person you said you're going to ring them on the sixth, may or may not be the sixth, but they're next on the list. And as you can see, it's just sorted um, all the dates in there by the next contact um, date that you promised that person you were going to contact them on. Um, let's just assume that it is the 16th or whatever whatever the date is today, 16th the 11th. So you've got a few people here that you said you were going to contact, but you haven't. Um, so that's where you obviously should start. Um, you've got a person here that you said you were going to contact next year. You probably wouldn't contact that person because that date hasn't come around yet. Um, let's just say... Um, you you remembered their name, but you don't know when you t when you said you were going to ring them. Um, you might not have said you were going to ring them at a particular day, but you you can remember someone's name and you think, oh yeah, I must ring Joan five. So obviously, if you've got fifty people in here or hundred people, it's going to be very hard to go through there and find Joan number five. So what you can do is you can go up here to the filter, click on that little drop down, you can click off select all. And you can search down here and you say, Joan 5, that's her. I want to see what her contact details are. You just click on that, cross it out. And all you've got on the screen is Joan 5, what her contact details are and her contact history with you. Um, so you can go through here and say, oh, yeah, I rang her on such and such a date. I said I was going to ring her here. She's got a sick sister. So you jump on the phone and say, oh, hey, how's your sick sister going? Sorry, I said I was going to ring you on the 24th of the 11th, but it's now the 26th of the 11th. Um, oh, sorry, no, I was going to ring you on the 2nd of the 11th, but now it's the 26th. Sorry, I'm a bit late. All right. right. Um, once you've contacted Joan 5, you want to go back to your contacts again. So what you do is you click on there, click on Select All. So you want to see all your contacts, and voila, they all come back there. Um, not many people are probably going to remember someone's um, address and as you can see now that I've switched them all back on they've mixed up in the order which is fine so I've got one two three five and four and as you can see the four lines up with the four and the four um, let's just say you want to you've woken up on Monday morning and you said right I'm gonna have a MailChimp day today I want to find everyone that's not added to MailChimp so what you do is you click on your little filter there click off, click select all off, and you want to find everyone that's not been added to MailChimp. Close that down, and there's all your people that haven't been mailed, added to MailChimp, so you go through them one by one and add them into MailChimp if MailChimp is something that you do use. Um, once you've added all those people in, just click on select all again, close that down, and you've got all your contacts back. Uh, contact history is probably not something that you're really going to search on <clears throat> because you're going to type random stuff into there. As you can see, this column here, you can type in whatever you want. Uh, you might type in ring. Um, ring today is not a good one. So let's say ring on the 31st of the 10th. I don't know whether that's a real date even. 17. No. No answer. Um, as you can see, yeah, it's, it's um, probably not a good idea to search by contact history, history because you've just got all these random um, words in there. But nonetheless, it is a very important column to have in there because it tells you when you last contacted that person um, and perhaps when uh, you need to contact them again. But you should, you should put your next contact date in the next column here so that you can search for it. So say you wanted to search by the last person you contacted. You might have rung them yesterday. You said you're going to send them something. Um, you've woken up the next morning and you think, oh, I can't remember that person's name. You'll sort by descending. So you'll come into here and go, okay, search through the dates. Um, okay, it was just say it was the 7th of the 10th. You can sort, sort in order. You're going to go through there and go, uh, okay, here we go, 7th of the 10th. That's right, it was Mary number three. She lives at Three Street. Bang, you send your parcel off, whatever you're going to send her, and away you go. Um, if you wanted to, you can change the order back then, back to ascending. Um, yeah. 
uh, or you can change any of the other filters to, to find that to find a, the next person that you need to contact. Um, let's just say that you wake up on Monday morning again and you need to work out who's enrolled and who's not. You might have a full free day and you want to go through your, all your unenrolled contacts uh, and just touch base with them and uh, see how they're going. So you go in here and go tick off select all and are they enrolled? No. So there you go, there's all your unenrolled contacts and you can just go through them in whatever order you want to uh, and contact them one by one. Once you've contacted all those people, just go back into your enrolled tab. So as you can see on the top here, once you've used a filter, it comes up with a little bit of a different symbol. It doesn't come up with the triangular down symbol. Uh, it comes up with the filter symbol here, which means you're using that filter. So you want to turn that filter off. You just go back into there, go select all, close, and you've got all your contacts back again. This little symbol here means that you're just filtering by um, ascending or descending order in that column. Um, that's not a big drama. You can sort by descending and order, uh, descending or ascending order in any column that you want. Um, and it doesn't really make much difference um, once you go in and use the filters. Um, you might want to find the people that you haven't sent a welcome pack to. So you go in there and go still to send, close. Oh, okay. I still haven't sent Paul number two, his welcome pack. He lives at not two number two street. Bang, put it in the mail, done. Once again, turn your filter off, select all again. You've got all your contacts back. And then you can go to the next task. Um, you might want to, oil camp might be starting this month. And you want to find all your contacts who haven't done oil camp. So you go into your oil camp filter and you go, I want to find, select, turn select all off. And I want to find everyone who has not done oil camp. And you can see there that Mary number three and John number four have not done oil camp. So you might send uh, an invitation out to them to um, join in this month's oil camp and uh, potentially get an enrolment out of them. Once you finish with that, select all again, close that down, all your contacts are back. Um, in notes, not really much use in filtering by notes because once it, as I said before, uh, all your notes are just random comments that you've put in there. Um, unless you go into here and you want to just scroll through and just imagine if you've got 50 or 100 contacts in there, you're going to have 100 completely different notes that you're going to have to scroll through and find. It's probably much easier to scroll through here. Pretend that you wanted to find someone that had three kids. Um, you can scroll through all the words here and try and find who's got three kids. Or what you can also do is go... Um, sort and filter. Um, you can do a custom. Sorry, I'm not really very used to Mac. No, let's cancel that. Let's try and, whoops, not that one. Um, on a normal PC, there's a find option, and I'm not sure. Command, let's try Command F. Here we go. Find up the top here. You might want to find someone who you think you typed a message into their notes that said three kids. Typing up there, three kids. Search. Okay, so, so it's jumped straight onto that cell. Let's just say we're down here and you typed in three kids and you hit enter. Uh, search. Search in sheet. Aha, and it's not finding it because I typed in three young kids. So if that fails, then you might go back and let's just say, let's just search for three because I know they've got three kids, but I can't remember how they, how they put it in there. Why isn't it finding number three? Search in sheet. Search in workbook. Sorry, it's proving me wrong. Apple's done it again. Search. I can assure you it works on a PC. I can't make it work on an Apple. But if you're an Apple fan, 
you probably know how to search for something. Um, okay, so that's that's our contacts manager. Um, let's just say that you've got your 100 contacts in there and you might remember that this person you put in there was around about contact number um, number four, say, but let's say, let's say you had 100 contacts in there and you don't want to scroll down 100 contacts, what you can do is you can sort in descending order. So you can set it up so that it will put number 100 at the top and you'll start at 100 and work your way back down and it might be um, uh, just, just below 100, say, and that, that contact might be in, in this line here. So that's, that's a different way of sorting by the number. You're probably not going to use that too much. So let's just go back to ascending. Um, but I think the, the, best, the best way to use this tool is to support, sort by what tasks you need to do. So the contacts are in there. Um, that's a bonus. Um, what you really want to do is search by the task. So whether they need to be added to MailChimp, um, when the next contact date is, when they need to be, uh, whether they're enrolled or not, whether you've sent them a welcome pack, whether you need to do a welcome call. Um, so I don't think I did that one. So let's just go in here and say, oh, I want to do some welcome calls today. Let's just see who's outstanding, whose welcome calls are outstanding. Go in there and you can see that Joan number five needs a welcome call. So you'll straight away ring Joan number five and everyone else who's on that list. Um, you can see that she's got a six sister, so that's something you can bring into the conversation to make it a little bit more personal. Um, you can also see that she hasn't done oil, or you can see that she has done oil camp, so you might say, oh, how did oil camp go for you? Um, makes it a lot more personal if you can ring someone and have that personal contact and know what they've done. And, and people understand that um, you're a busy person, but if you can add that little bit of personal contact in there and say, oh, how did oil camp go? They might think, oh, gee, how did you remember that I did oil camp? Um, and it, it just improves that personal contact. Once again, click the filter off. So if, if you open this up, or you, say, for example, you'd saved it, you'd gone back out, you open it up again and go, oh, no, where have all my contacts gone? All you've got to do is look across the filters across the top and go, oh, whoops, I've got this filter turned on. Um, turn the filter off and select all again. Close it down. And there you go, you've got all your contacts back again. So that's it. It's pretty simple and easy to use. If anyone um, does need any more information on it or if you can think of an extra column that you would like in your Excel spreadsheet, your contact manager, just give me a yell. I can quickly and easily add it in there, add the filter in there and send it back to you. Um, but, um, yeah, it's, it's a really quick and easy way to manage your contacts much easier than putting it in a piece of paper um, or just filing them randomly on um, wild orange sheets or uh, or anything else that you might use, punching them into Word. Word's, Word's okay for putting text into, but you can't really sort or find people in it. So uh, Excel's quite quite easy to use. Obviously, once you've gone in there and you've put, it, put your extra contacts in, make sure you hit save at the end of the day so that... Um, you don't lose all the information that you put in that day. You can leave this open, save it on your desktop so that if someone rings, um, bang, you've got it instantly on your desktop. You can jump straight into it while you're talking to them. They might have said, oh, my name's Mary. You can go in and go, okay, let's search for all the Marys. Close. Oh, Mary 3, that's right. Oh, you live at such such a street or so-and-so, whatever else. Or, oh, that's right, we spoke last week. Um, it's quite powerful in the way that you can search for different things and get people's information quite quickly, especially if it's stored on your desktop. Um, okay. So if anyone's got any questions, um, I can probably answer them now or Jess is going to jump on here shortly and give us a run through on some other contact programs that we can use, um, the more commercially available ones. But... Um, Look, really, when you're starting out, you don't want to spend any money on commercially available um, products because you've got to pay either monthly or you've got to pay up front for them. This one's quite quick and easy and simple to use. Uh, if anyone needs some more help on, on using theirs or setting theirs up, please just give us a call and um, we can certainly help you through. 
I can see Amber's online twice. How are you going, Amber? Did you have any questions on that? Are you there, Amber? No. No? It's okay. Sorry. Jess is going to jump on and tell us a little bit about some of these more commercially available products. So thanks, everyone. See you later. Okay, so what we're going to show you is, so, the, so Darren's just shown us a really good, simple Excel spreadsheet. And I can tell you now that there's presidential diamonds in Australia running off just an Excel spreadsheet. So don't think that just because you're paying for something um, that it's going to be any better. Um, Lead Train is one that I started using, however, it's not really working for me. It has so many capabilities and I'm just not using it to its full um, potential. So I'll just show you my screen for that. So Lead Train is, I can't remember how much it is. It's probably, oh, some chat here. I only use Pizza. I, I can see what you're typing, Amber, but I can't hear you at the moment. Um, but we'll just show you lead train. So share this screen. Okay, so lead train here is divided up into a dashboard. Then you've got prospects, leads, teams, and groups. So you really can add people. Um, to it's all about adding people to tracks so a track might be um, oil education and a track just means there's multiple steps so for this oil education track there's 55 steps so when we look at what steps they might be um, there might be an email then there might be that's not a good example here we go we'll show you another one Okay, so this is one for sending out samples. So there's a pre-qualifying pre email or text that you send out to someone who wants a sample and that might say, are you working with any other, um, here we go, thanks so much for contacting me. Here's, some, um, here's a video to watch. Please answer these questions before I send you a sample. Are you working with anyone else? Do you have a wholesale account, um, et cetera, et cetera. And then what that does is, then you can modify that and you can send that email. And then one day later, it gives you a reminder to send them another email or another text to ask, do you still want your samples if they haven't got back to you? And then it goes on and on and on. So every day there's a different thing. And this is just a track you can set up yourself. You can change the time period. It might be a day, it might be a week between contacts. And then this has got, yeah, nine different steps in that track to get you along to that, get you in contact with that person. So lead train is awesome for that. It, it can really lead you down the path of post workshop. So this one, thanks after a workshop is an email. There's two emails. And then the idea is to put them into um, your contacts list um, and be able to work with them. So if we have a look back at our contacts, so prospects, these are people that have had workshops or been to a class. Leads are, yeah, people that have been to a class or had samples. And then the team. So these are people in the team. And that means you can then make a track for your whole team. Then I've broken them down into groups. So my enrollees, people that are mature age, mums and bubs, friends, found on Facebooks. So lead train is really, really good. However, for me, I'm just using it purely as a holding file. I don't use the tracks as they're intended. I don't use the social media integration. I don't really use the pages. So it enables you to have a page for samples, a page for um, events. I don't use that at all. The, the social media allows you to post um, you know, I think I did one, um, scheduled post, but you can do all of that in Facebook anyway. So it costs about $12 a month. And for me, it's not worth the $12 a month. So I will be getting out of that. Um, 
The other one is called Zoho, which is free. And Zoho is a cloud software suite. Um, and part of it involves a CRM, so a client relationship manager system. And this is what it looks like. You can sign up for a free account and that allows you up to a certain amount of entries. And it is very intricate. So you can use it exactly the way I use Lead Train at the moment, just to keep notes, or you can use something like Darren's Excel spreadsheet. So Zoho is one to look at. I'd probably look at that before I looked at Lead Train. There is another one called Sinduit, which is geared towards the um, network marketing and essential oil marketing. So for me, I think I'm going back to the old fashioned way, which is the, the Excel spreadsheet. So one of our presidential diamonds in Australia just uses this. And she probably has, I would say, thousands of entries on hers. And every day or every week, whenever she's doing her follow-up or planning her classes or planning a Spoil Yourself campaign or sending out welcome packs, she is using that spreadsheet. So I really recommend, for, especially for when you're starting out, just use that. Also makes it very easy just to copy a whole list of emails. So say you had 100 emails there to copy them and paste them into MailChimp. So I know Amber was asking about MailChimp. Definitely worthwhile. We'll do a whole nother um, training on MailChimp, but definitely get yourself a MailChimp account and start putting your contacts into that. Um, you might decide to do... MailChimp has free automation now, so it does the similar thing to Lead Train where you can send an email, then one day later send another email, three days later send another email. And you can vary the time between. You might want to send an email an hour apart. You can do that. So MailChimp is really, really good and it's free for up to 2,000 entries. So that's awesome because by the time you have 2,000 entries, you're going to be a diamond anyway um, and you'll be able to afford it. It's only a nominal fee after that anyway. Um, it gives you the full report so it's able to show you who's clicked on what. Um, and our time is about to run out, so we will do another um, training on MailChimp that's separate. But it's all reported. It links back to your Facebook page. It links back to your email. It can link back to your website. And you can see, the best bit is you can see who's clicked what links and who's been into that email 10 times, 20 times. If you see someone that's been into a particular email, someone on your leads list that be, has been into an email 10, 20 times, that might be a signal for you to then invite them to a workshop to then follow up with a phone call, something like that. So I can show you here very, very quickly. So this is my MailChimp and basically it's free to join, really easy to set up. It has campaigns, so if we go to the dashboard, you can see down here, it's telling me all my, all my tracking, all my charts, all the numbers. You can create templates, so you can create a template and just send an email off that template. So I have monthly emails set up in this folder. So for instance, in June, you can see the email I sent out. It's all drag and drop, really, really simple. It's taking a while to load because we're on Zoom, but where is it? Oh, here it comes. So this is the email I sent out. And then if we go back, we can view the report. So there's 33 people I sent that email to. 24 people opened it and one person clicked it. And I, if I click on that, I'll be able to see who actually clicked it. I can also see when the most people opened it. So when is a good time to send an email? You can also automate, like um, schedule your emails to go out at a certain times. So if most people are in America, for instance, that are your leads and you want to send them at 2 a.m. our time, you can definitely do that. So we only ever add people into our list that have given us permission. So that's very strict with MailChimp. So for us, we have it um, divided up into people that are enrolled, Facebook leads, general leads, uh, Gardening workshops, we've got a couple of webinars and a collaboration that we've done there. So we can really target those audiences. Then you can also add 
you can subgroup those leads. Say, for instance, people that are, have done workshops, people that are leads from sampling, you can also subgroup that. So that's a very quick rundown of MailChimp. So I think that's all we need to discuss. Um, so it's really good that Darren's done that up for everyone to use. It just makes life a lot easier. And if you can really get into the habit of using that, it's really going to set yourself up for making life easier when you've got hundreds or thousands of leads that you've got to follow up. We wish we had thousands of leads, but in a month, it would, would not be an unusual for you to make contact with people a couple of hundred times over the course of the month. So really, when, when you're having a slow month, this is something you should be doing all the time is following up, inviting people, doing spoil yourself, doing oil camps, sending out um, welcome packs. These are all things that you should be doing on a week-to-week -week basis, sending MailChimp um, mail outs. So this is a really good thing to keep just doing, just to do it like clockwork every week as just your stock standard work that you do so that when you have a bit of a lull, you keep doing that and you don't just flounder and think, I've got no workshops, no one's following up, no one's asking for samples, you just keep working off this list and it's a recipe for success. So even um, there's a special formula in doTERRA and it's about having two contacts a day, two, two, two new contacts a day, two follow-ups a day and two workshops a week. I think that's how it goes, but we'll do it. I'll find that out for sure. And basically what it's saying is every day you should be contacting, following up with two of your people at least, and every day you should be sampling or getting two new contacts. And that's not that difficult to do. So if you can do that every day, you will be building your business at a, at a rapid rate and you'll have people at your workshops. Um, and then, you know, some people can't do it every single day. Maybe you only work two or three days a week. Or I know some people in the higher ranks will just do their whole spreadsheet over the course of two days every month. They'll just sit down and, and ha hammer it out. But for us, we're doing, um, you know, you've got enrolments, you want them to have their welcome packs and their welcome calls all up to date. There's nothing worse than getting behind in your welcome calls especially. They're so, so important. So, did you have any questions, Amber? Okay. So, thank you everyone for joining us and we will chat soon. Just put any questions that you have below this video and we will answer them. And, of course, always just reach out. If you want a copy of that Excel document, then that's no problem at all. That's available to everyone. Thank you. See you later.